Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video about uh, diputectic solvents. I've been doing some research on uh, diputectic solvents based on some um, other scientists' works, and um, I came up I came up with a few recipes, and uh, in this moment I'm testing their. Uh, properties in uh, an all carbon device. I'm not saying a super capacitor, I'm not saying a battery, but an all carbon super device. Because the construction is exactly as a symmetrical super capacitor, but the results that I've got till now are showing, uh, let's say, a battery behavior uh, discharge curve. And having said that, in front we have in the um, the bigger pot we have uh, my first diputectic solvent that I made it like maybe four months ago six months ago I can't remember exactly it was transparent yellowish and now we can see that it has that those sediments not significantly but they're still there this one, probably as you are guessing, it is a lovely emerald color. It is a, based on a nickel chloride uh, and urea. Also, I am preparing here, this is a zinc chloride and urea. That is an ammonium chloride and urea and the... Uh, this I think is a failure. It has already two days and doesn't want to become transparent and clear. And um, as I was saying, I'm already testing here a supercapacitor, a symmetrical supercapacitor construction device. Uh, all carbon with a normal filter paper separator. I think the total weight on both electrodes is 0 0.5 grams of active material. And it has uh, the as electrolyte the diputectic solvent based on nickel chloride, and this is the discharging curve. It has 11 minutes now, still at 0 0.9. It dropped from 1.6 to roughly 1.2 initially, and then became very very stable. As you can see, it's discharging at 10 milliamps, and I'll, I'll wait till it will discharge completely. And then, what I'm going to do, I have here in front another prepared already, another, let's say, device. You can see the active material. filter paper another active material and what I'm going to do I'm going to add as an electrolyte the um, the diputectic solvent based on ammonium and urea all right I will pause now and I'll come back when the discharging uh, curve uh, is finished for for this uh, supercapacitor to see how it, uh, it performs see you in a bit a short update, it's now been half an hour since I started to discharge this uh, device, it's still at 0 0.788 of a volt, 5 milli uh, ampere hour, 4 milliwatt hour, doesn't look that bad. And in the meantime I am allowing the diputectic solvent to penetrate and being absorbed properly by the electrodes, anode and cathode, and um, yeah, I'll come back a little bit later, see ya. Alright, because it was taking way too long, I've changed 
the discharge value for 20 milliamp and uh, finally finished uh, it was I think when it passed like 44 minutes and uh, I made that change and uh, finally it finished 50 minutes 9 milliamp hour 8 milliwatt hour not bad also I want to specify the fact that in this test I'm not testing the activated carbon I'm testing the electrolyte and the all carbon system I'm saying that because as active material I'm using a sacrificial um, let's say act, um, hemp plus coal a mixture that I was uh, just using it to seal the active material that I was actually making so either hemp was at the top to to be as a, a lead as a, a seal to keep the oxygen away from the active material either I was using coal for that and though that sacrificial material I tested mixed it and uh, it has a very good uh, resistance but nothing more it wasn't treated it wasn't prepared just what was capable uh, to to steal from the real active material yeah and I was saying as I was saying this is the, the second uh, device that I'm going to test it has as an electrolyte the diputectic solvent based on um, ammonium chloride and urea as you can see those are really thin and if you can really I'm going to show you exactly the piece that I I've used to to make uh, these electrodes I'll be back in a second all right as you can see just connected the cell has 0 0.13 of a volt now I'm going to charge it for a while and um, let me clear first to have a little bit. to see properly how the charging curve will, uh, will start All right, 77, first spike, good. And um, yeah, as I was saying, the active material is this thin paper that I made. It's very light, very thin. I'm going to cut two small squares to build another cell for the zinc um, let's say chloride uh, based electrolyte and um, I'll be back all right so I cut two small squares one is like 0 0.79 with the binder so I'm presuming is somewhere around 0 0.07 of a gram active material and it is a sacrificial active material so this is one and the other one 0 0.09 normal filter paper and I'm going to build um, a new cell for the zinc chloride based uh, diputectic solvent the the ammonium chloride and urea honestly doesn't look that great it is charging i don't know for the has six minutes and 40 seconds uh, since it's charging is drawing now only eight milliamps I'll leave it till we get to 10 minutes and then uh, we'll start discharging. 
All right. See you in a bit. All right. The two electrodes are ready. I'm going to add the separator. Already managed to destroy a little bit this one because the electrolyte so so quickly, so quickly it absorbs the electrolyte very very well. I'll try to show you. And that's it, it's inside. Since Robert Murray Smith posted like a few months ago, maybe a year, um, that technique of making uh, paper with uh, graphite insertion. I've been playing with, um, with this, uh, let's say, paper uh, active material. And um, my first one, I do remember, was a very thick one, I think in the range of 4-5 millimeter thickness. Was too thick, way too thick. So then the next one that I've made, I believe, was this one. Somewhere around 1, one to 1.5 millimeters uh, thickness. Now I'm using it as a heated bed for my um, magnetic steer. Another one, a very good one, is this one. Again, it absorb very, absorbs very, very well the electrolyte. The thickness is just under one millimeter. And the one that I'm using it now is, I believe, under 0.5 of a millimeter. All right, we are very close to 13 minutes. I'm going to start now the charge, charging of the cell, and um, let's see. I forgot to change to 0 0.010. Not very happy. I will give it another chance to charge. See you in a bit. I'm giving it a second charge to this cell with uh, the diputectic solvent based on ammonium chloride and um, urea. Honestly, still doesn't look very good. But we'll give it a go. Um, I've changed the discharge rate to 10 milliamps and uh, we'll see what will happen. Coming back to our diputectic solvents, um, I think because we don't have any metal ions in the this uh, diputectic solvent, the results won't be that great. When if we add a metal ion like nickel, zinc, <clears throat> iron, uh, copper, we will get much better results. And um, this is why I think the nickel-based uh, diputectic solvent performed better. And we will see, we will see how the zinc-based uh, diputectic solvent will uh, perform. For the moment, it has almost seven minutes since it's charging. We'll leave it till we get to ten minutes. We also have to take in consideration the difference in uh, weight of the active material. I would say that in total, in this cell, we have maybe, well, let's say 0 0.2 of a gram active material, when on the other one was I can say exactly because I know that I've made a note somewhere. Uh, on one plate and on the other plate, 510 
milligrams, so 0.51, so it's less than half. But we will see what will happen. Yeah, and um, I have to thank to Robert Murray Smith uh, for posting that uh, method of uh, preparing the active material with um, normal uh, cellulose fibers as a binder. I'm also making, uh, let's say, an addition of um, a few additives to increase the the permeability of the material and uh, make it a little bit stronger and um, I'm quite happy with uh, how I can uh, manipulate, cut, uh, um, work with this um, active material binded by, uh, by paper. Uh, eight, nine minutes. I think is had enough. We'll give it a go now, and um, I'll come back a little bit later to see how it works. So the voltage dropped to 1.8. After I start discharging, drop to 1.3, and this discharging pretty fast. So as I said, nothing impressive. Probably I don't even need to pause this video. Yeah, for sure. The next binder that I'm uh, thinking to use but I need to do a little bit more research on that. It will be based on um, ethylene glycol and um, isopropyl alcohol. I've been watching some... Um, one paper about it, and uh, but I'm not yet clear how to prepare this, uh, this binder. And uh, I'm going to test it uh, probably soon, but step by step we are now focusing on uh, the diputectic solvent as an electrolyte using uh, zinc as an uh, let's say current collector gave me many many uh, hard times um, and slowly slowly i moved away from that now i'm trying to build only all carbon devices no um, no metal uh, current collectors and um, that will be my focus uh, from now on all right uh, let's start charging the second the third uh, cell and um, we'll carry on from there see you in a bit just connected the cell it has literally no voltage So we start charging the, sec uh, the third cell based on uh, diputectic solvent uh, with zinc chloride, the type 4 one, and um, it had a very good initial current draw, 112 milliamps. We'll leave it for 10 minutes and then I'll, uh, I'll come back uh, when I'll start the discharge. I'm going to stop now the charging of the cell and start discharging. We will see. It doesn't look very, very promising, but still, we'll give it a chance. Obviously, I'm going to keep these cells for. 
uh, other tests. After a while, obviously, the deep, uh, the electrolyte will soak even better. Maybe, maybe they will perform better. What I've noticed, this is the ammonia and the um, ammonium chloride and the urea based electrolyte. I've removed it from the heated bed. It looks like it's solidifi uh, solidifying again. Coming back to a crystallized uh, form. That is not something that makes me happy. It doesn't stay liquid, which is not good. When, if we look at the Uh, I'll pause the video. If we look at the nickel based deputectic solvent, it is crystal clear. It is very. has a high vis viscosity. I will try to dip a stick. I would say that it has a viscosity similar to the maple syrup. So, really, really nice. And um, I've just noticed that the other cell finished after two minutes. Not too happy. But as I said, I will uh, I will test these cells later for a few more times, and um, then we will decide which and how we will proceed with uh, these cells. I believe it's enough for this video. I will carry on with my work and I will keep you updated when uh, when I'll come up with uh, new results. Thank you for watching and um, please add comments with your suggestions, how to improve, help me with your ideas and I will try to put them in practice. Thank you, have a great weekend.